Hello, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I'd like to share with you how I'm going to put my doors up. So I've managed to get these second hand bifold doors, which are, as you can see, too tall and I'm going to have to modify them. And I'm going to be installing them on what they call a barn door system which I'll be showing you how to do. So I picked up this bundle system on eBay and I've bought a three meter span door which I'm going to be installing. It does come with some instructions and then it's got two of the rollers and two for the other door. And in this box, it's got all the screws. And supports that we're going to be using for the door. They're the small runners that go on the top of the door. And these ones are the floor runners. And in the smaller box, we've got the stoppers for the doors. To install a track onto your wall, what you need to do is you need to take the height of your door and add 43 millimeters on top of that to where you're going to be attaching it. Now, I want my door to be hanging five centimeters taller than the architrave so what I'm doing is I'm cutting out a template so the template that I'm cutting out from there to there because I want five centimeters on top of the door and then I need a 4.3 so the distance that I'm cutting the template is 9.3 centimeters and then I'm going to take that and mark the wall so I've got the template out and now I'm placing it on top of the architrave and then I'm just going to mark along the template. And that will give me my line where I'm going to need to drill. Once I finish marking where I'm going to be drilling, I'm going to take a level and draw a line so that everything is level. When you open the box that's got all the screws and connections in it, you'll notice that you've got different kinds of bolts. So you've got this one, which has got really, really thick thread on it. And then you've got the other ones that have got really fine, fine thread on it. Now, depending on which kind of wall that you have, if you have got a concrete wall, you're going to be using this particular screw because it comes with an attachment of a dyna bolt so that when you screw your screw into here, the back part is going to open to secure it into a concrete wall. However, if you've got walls like I've got, which are just the gyprock walls, you're going to have to use this particular bolt and find the studs on the walls so that these ones can screw straight into the studs and then reattach the supports on the back of that. The washers are supplied as well. As you can see, all the railings have got slightly different connections on the ends. So I've laid them all on the floor so that I can see how they're going to fit. So they fit into each other like, like that. So there's one of the screw holes. Now, I've marked all the pre-drilled screw holes onto my wall and unfortunately for me, none of the holes actually line up with any of my studs. So I'm going to have to modify my support system 
so that it'll hold the doors. So where my studs are located, what I've done is I've taken an 8mm drill bit and I've drilled a hole where my studs are and I'm going to be using the screws that I supplied with this particular track. And for the ones that are already pre-drilled with the track, I have to modify those in a way that they're going to support as well. So I'm going to be using all the pre-drilled holes and putting spring tolls in them because I've got plasterboard walls so I have to have something really secure to hold this. So unfortunately this is the largest size screw that these particular toggles come in and as you can see they're really really very loose inside the support. So what I've done is I've bought some grommets. Uh, they are 3 sixteenths by 5 sixteenths and they fit quite perfectly into the back and I'm putting one in the back and one in the front so that the screw does not wiggle when you put the screw in otherwise it's just wiggly like that so having the grommet in it makes the screw quite nice and tight and because this particular screw head is so small I'm going to be putting a washer on that which will be going directly into the metal rods that we're going to be putting up when you're putting the toggle onto the screw make sure that you've got the flat end facing that is going to be connecting to the wall so when you put the toggle in you're collapsing it that way and putting it into the wall so we've got to attach all the pieces to the toggle and then put it into the wall. To make sure I get the right position, what I've done is I've taped the two pieces together and I've got a piece of masking tape and I've just marked where I need to drill that particular hole onto the wall. I've done it on both sides. To insert the toggle into the wall, you need to have a 14 millimeters hole. Unfortunately, I've only got a 10 drill bit. So what I've done is I've drilled the hole and then I'm using a rectangle rasp to make it the size that the toggle will fit through. So now I've got the right size hole. So when I collapse the toggle and place it into the hole, you can see it fits quite nicely. This small plastic pipe, which I've just taken from one of the kids' old tents. So it's a very small little hole. And I'm cutting the small pieces of plastic at the same distance, which is 3.4 centimeters, to make the spaces that'll go behind this rather large screw. So that will just fit in like that and then I'm going to spray paint them black. I've cut my little pipes and filed them smooth and painted them black and now I'm going to put them over the screws. The very first thing that you must do is put your stoppers on that are going to stop the doors in the middle because otherwise you've got to take the whole system down to try and slide these over. So make sure that you've got the little soft rubber pieces that are going to be catching the wheel. So you've got one on that side and the other one is on that side. So just slide them on first and then you can tighten them up after. So to assemble the first support I've put the grommets on that side and on that side and I've got the washer on the top of the screw's head and we're going to be placing that into a support and then threading that onto the back of the screw. So I've got the tool all set up. So as you can see I've got the flat piece at the back and then I'm just going to collapse that and put it into the wall now. If you're going to be using this toggle system, make sure you put all your toggles in 
and hand tighten them just enough so that they hold it all in place because when you come to this one over here it's a very very tricky one to try and line up so try and get the toggles on the two pieces and then you can get that one in and then secure this one first tight before you securing the other ones and before you secure them all tight use a level to make sure that you've got it level so I've got the two of them in at the moment and now we're going to do the third one. The third one is a lot easier to put in than the others because everything is secured on the side. So this particular part over here is a lot easier to assemble than the first one. So now I've got all the railings up. As you can see with the toggles, I've had to use a different colour screw, so I'm going to be painting those black. I'm just using a gloss black spray paint to spray the screws. To paint the screws, I've taken a piece of aluminium foil and I've used the back of the screw to get the right size hole so that I can put that over screw and just spray so that it doesn't go all over the walls and everywhere else. So as you can see I've placed it over the screw and now I'm just going to spray that black. This is the bolt that I've used that was supplied with the system and that's the one that is going into my stud and as you can see I've put the small little piping behind it for the spacer. I've cut my doors down now and as you notice in the bottom here it's sort of like all vacant so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bottom and pull the sides off to get that piece of wood so that it can finish off the doors at the bottom so that's what the door would look like and I've left the hinges on to give it a little bit more strength and now I'm going to just glue the two doors together and then fill them with some polyfiller and then I will sand them and paint them. I've glued all the doors together and I've put yak filler on them and now just to keep them straight I've got these zinc plates that I'm going to be placing just on the top. I've marked the holes where I need to drill I'm pre-drilling them and then I'm going to use my impact driver and put the screws in. So that's the plate in place before I paint my doors, I'm going to be drilling the holes where the attachments that go on top of the door are going to be placed. So now, measuring from this side, we're going to come in 150 millimeters. 150 millimeters, and from the top of the door, we're going to go down four centimeters and then we're going to go down to 13 centimeters because you need a gap of four and then nine so that makes 13 centimeters so we're going to be drilling on that mark on both of them and the same measurements on the other side of the same door and then you repeat the same measurements on the second door. The size of the drill bit that we're going to use is a size 10 however mine is quite a blunt one at the end so it slips a little bit so I'm going to actually be using a 5 to pre-drill first in these holes and then I will increase it to the 10. So those are the tens drilled into the doors now. Make sure that you're drilling through both sides of the doors. And that's the runner that will go onto the doors and then run along the tracks. You'll notice when you take the runner out of the box, the cap nuts are on the opposite side of the wheel and that's the way that you have to insert them. So 
unscrewing the bottom one and inserting it from underneath so that the cap nuts are located on the top part of the door. Depending on the thickness of your door, you might need to add more washers when you're installing the runner because as you can see, it comes with this cap nut and you can only tighten that so tight. So now we're going to be installing those. So placing one of the washers over the, and then inserting it underneath like that. So you've got your two bolts through and now just put these ones on the top. Put a washer over and tighten the cap nut. And the same with the top one. As you can see by my doors, this one is just a tiny bit thicker than this one. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to need two washers on this one, one stacked on top of the other so that that's tight, whereas this one fits perfectly. So now the runners are in place. To install the little guide wheel, what you need to do is place it right at the bottom flush with the side that the big wheels are on so place it flush there and then drill a hole so once it's in position like that then rotate it the opposite direction and then we're ready to install them and before i put my panel on i'm going to try and lift these doors if you've got help doing that it makes it a lot easier these doors are quite heavy so I'm not going to be filming me struggling to pick them up and put them on but all we're going to do is we're going to pick them up and line them up on the runner as you can see there's a groove in the wheel here and we're going to line those up on the runners I've got the doors up now once you've lifted the doors and placed them up onto the runners like that then what you do is you rotate the little wheel back into place so that it runs along the black support bar. Now we're going to adjust the centre pieces to keep the doors in the position that we want when they're in the closed position. So taking your Allen key, just tighten the screws that are located just on the top here in the position where you want it when the doors are in the closed position. To modify my doors, I'm going to be using these old dividers. They're just the ordinary divider like this. I'm going to be using these to make a feature on my sliding doors. So I have to clean them up a bit and modify them so that they'll actually fit. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking out the hinges. So there's two hinges on each panel. Which I'm going to be removing. I've taken them all apart and as you can see they're in really really poor condition so they're really going to have to be fixed up quite a lot. So there's some little pieces missing at the bottom, some holes. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be removing all this backing. I'm just taking a sharp knife and cutting in some places so I can rip it all off. Before I dismantle the whole piece, I like to mark which piece is attached to which piece because these are such precision made little pieces, they only fit into the ones that they come off. So to make it a little bit easier for me, I mark them all. These panels are connected on the sides here. And 
mine were only connected with these staples so what I'm doing is I'm pulling these staples out so I can put a new piece of cloth onto my divider I've got all my pieces off now I'm going to just sand them and then I'm going to spray paint them all black I'm just sanding them down with 100 grit sandpaper and I'm only sanding the one side that is going to be facing outward because the other one is going to be attached behind so you won't be able to see that so I'm not going to be spraying that one please wear a mask when you're sanding and this is the non-iron interfacing that I'm going to be using as you can see it's really really thin so what I'm doing is I'm doubling it over and then if you are going to be using this as a divider I'd suggest that you glue the material onto all the little strips however because I'm only using this as a decorative piece for my doors I'm only going to be putting some glue along the bottom top and the sides and then gluing my material down in the corners and in some places up the sides I'm going to be using this no sew adhesive so that's what it looks like and all you do is cut small pieces off place them in the corners and then iron them on that'll make your fabric nice and taut on the frame so the backing is all on and as you can see it's really nice and taut now we're going to just put the frame back on because I'm putting my panels over the hinges they don't lie completely flush because of this little piece of wood in the middle so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of double sided mounting tape on either side and then I'm going to put a screw in the middle so I'll have double sided mounting tape at the bottom at the top and then screwed on now because these doors are going to be closed permanently I'm making them a feature so I'll be moving all my pieces into place once I've finished the doors as you can see the package comes with two plugs, two screws and your door slider that goes at the bottom. Now because my doors are going to be permanently closed, I'm not going to be installing the screws and plugs. All I'm doing is I'm placing double sided tape underneath it and I'm going to just stick it to the floor just to hold the doors in place. Now when you put in your door sliders in, Get it to the position where it is flush and then put your put your door stop right at the start of the door so then when you slide it it's already in position. Sorry the lighting's a bit bad here. So like that. So when the door is in the closed position, it's still inside the door runner, like that. So when you open the door, it just slides straight through. And now do the same on the other side. And then my sliding doors are completed now. If you found this video helpful or you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Really appreciate it if you would subscribe. And thank you so much for watching.